reality. Um, yeah. So I think we should just um, crack on. Um, sure. So thank you everybody for um, joining us today. We usually do these lunch and learning sessions um, around lunchtime. So it's a little bit earlier for people um, in uh, the UK and obviously um, a bit later on for you, but I'm glad, Jeff, that this is more of a sociable time than you usually do webinars. Um, yeah. I'm really excited about the session today. Um, for those of you that are new to um, the iQuant Lunch and Learn series, we facilitate these weekly sessions so that people can share ideas, ask questions live to experts like Jeff, um, and get those questions answered in a live, really informal environment. Um, and um, I'm going to be moderating today. Um, I'm the CMO at iQuant. Uh, iQuant is a predictive AI that uh, tells people or shows people how uh, users are going to perceive digital experiences. Um, so we, we can explain that in a little bit more detail uh, a bit later on. Uh, this session is being recorded, so we're going to be able to share that with you um, later on. Um, if you have to drop off, don't worry, we'll get the full recording over to you. And please do, as I said, this is an opportunity to ask questions around uh, SEO, e-commerce, anything digital. Um, throw the questions into the chat function um, and I will put them to Jeff uh, throughout the presentation. So, Jeff, thank you so much again. Um, would you mind just giving us um, a little intro about yourself? Sure. Yeah. Um, hey, everybody. So, my name is Jeff Deutsch, and you know I am all about user experience as well. Um, similar to iQuant, uh, I think iQuant's awesome. Been um, using it for a long time. Used it back in in the mid to twenty mid twenty tens um, because I was working for a uh, heat map company back then. And, um, you know, it's, I like how our topic today intersects between sort of user experience, customer experience and search experience, which is what I do now. Um, so now I'm the marketing director for long tail UX. Um, we're all about creating personalized search experiences for companies, for shoppers, especially, uh, for e-commerce companies, but we do work for other companies as well. And uh, yeah, we have this sort of bold idea that uh, when somebody searches for something and has a very specific need, they should be presented with a page full of those things that things that actually serve that need. And uh, so we're going to talk about that today. And should I just jump right in um, and get, get cracking? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. So I wanted to start with something that was topical. So just a couple of days ago, Forbes came out with this article talking about the increasing customer expectations for customer experiences for online shopping. And so I wanted to talk about that first because, you know, these are signals that Google looks at. These are signals that every advertising platform looks at. And of course, you know, it's, it's what Iquan is concerned about is delivering sort of a customer experience that's, that's superior. Um, and that's what the world is expecting right now. So, as we've been on lockdown and, you know, we've been ordering more things from home, there's been actually a 77% increase in online buying in 2020 so far, which is far ahead of projections for where e-commerce was going. You know, actually the world wasn't supposed to hit this level of, of purchasing until 2024, 2026. And so we've suddenly been launched into the future here and actually online shoppers, a lot of them who, previously did their purchasing at physical stores, they expect that kind of experience, that kind of personalized experience that they would get in a store online, but we're not there yet. I mean, I mean, as a, as a whole e-commerce websites aren't where customers expect that we will be and we're not delivering that kind of experience yet. And the result is a lot of disappointment. So uh, according to that Forbes article, yeah, one in four shoppers, of these new shoppers had talked about being frustrated with their experience. And so what I wanna talk about today is how to, uh, instead of frustrating shoppers, to delight them and sort of give them an, uh, a, a surprisingly uh, good experience through user, user experience and through, um, through the look and feel of your landing pages specifically. So, uh, 
So yeah, the thing I wanted to talk about today, uh, we will, we can talk about SEO. I have a background in SEO. That's where I got my start. Um, but the thing that we're most concerned about right today is, is the user experience in shopping and, you know, and actually the, the sort of the situation that we're facing as marketers, which is that we're getting a lot more traffic and, and actually lower conversion rates than ever, surprisingly. So conversion rates have actually dropped, even though uh, online buying is, has increased. And so as marketers, what we're looking for is how do we provide those awesome experiences, um, not just so that the customer is happy, but also so that they buy more, they convert more, and you know we build pages that convert. And so what I wanted to talk about today is, is shopping ads in particular. This is just one example, but what I'll show you is the landing page experience that customers really expect from search. And that's the key here. So one thing about this, you know, shopping ads, if you're an e-commerce company, the, the average um, industry-wide of your search budget that's going, paid search budget that's going into shopping ads is actually 76%. So it's a, a large part of most e-commerce budgets. Um, and yet, often the experience that shoppers get is the kind of this traditional experience that shoppers get uh, from a, a landing page when they're searching for something, which is to be presented with just one product. So here is an example of a search experience that starts with a customer who is searching for an outdoor extension cord with multiple outlets. And they click on this, you know, a click on an ad, a shopping ad, and they're led to one of these single product landing pages. And so this is the typical experience. This is the, the old way of doing things, kind of the 20, let's say the 2020 way. So if you wanted to do 2024, 2026, that's what we're talking about today. Because these sort of pages actually, uh, pr they actually uh, perform 48% worse than other types of landing pages when the customer is doing a search. So it's a shopper who's searching for something and they're presented with the single product landing page, they tend to bounce 48% more often. And so, you know, I wanted to talk about why that is and because it, it really solving that and solving this problem can actually be transformative for a business. It's digital transformation, really. And so I wanted to first show you this statistic here, which is uh, from Monetate, a study back in 2018, which shows that when it's e-commerce and when the customer is searching, when it's from a, a search experience, uh, that's, that's where they started, the, the conversion rate actually doubles when you use another type of landing page other than this single product landing page. And, um, and so first I wanted to you know, just check with the, the people who are here, this, this poll, do you use single product landing pages for shopping? Um, yes, no, or I don't know. Um, I don't know if you wanted to, to talk to this at all um, while, we're, while we're on we the page should. or? We should be able to um, start seeing more people um, responding. So if you... Um... Yeah. Well, I'll just tell you, yeah, the example from a recent webinar I did where we had um, a, a few uh, hundred votes on this that 54% of the attendees said that they, they do use single product landing pages, which is a real shocker for me because it's, it's, it's not the best user experience. Um, should I leave this, this poll up? The polls disappeared for me. Oh, okay. All right, cool. <laughs> we were just discussing the, guys, the software, hey? <laughs> sure, yeah. And I wanted to show you guys why this is a poor search experience. Um, so here is the, the journey that I was talking about earlier. Somebody searches for this outdoor extension cord with multiple outlets. Um, they click one of the, the ads. This could be an organic result. It could be a paid result. Um, typically, they're going to they're gonna go to a page that has one product above the page fold. And that product might not actually match the, the type of product that they want, even though it, it technically could uh, solve their problem and, and fulfill their need. Um, maybe they don't like yellow. Maybe they don't like green. Maybe it doesn't have the right head. Maybe it doesn't have enough heads. You really don't know. And yet this is where we're pouring 76% of our paid search budget into is to pages just like this. And you can see there's some brands here that are actually larger, you know, larger brands. So this is not a good experience. This is in search. This is what we call uh, for a search experience. We call this pogo sticking derisively. It's not a, like a fun pogo sticking because you're bouncing back and forth from the, from the, 
page to the search result um, to go back to the search results. So it's a really bad user experience. And, uh, and that's the reason that it actually results in that poor performance where you're actually wasting 48% of your budget just because you're using these single product landing pages. And, you know, and specifically for shopping ads, this is what most companies do. And the reason is because Google makes it really easy. They say, just upload your product feed to us and we'll actually pick the keywords and all that stuff and all that crazy um, bidding and everything like that. Um, we'll take care of all that and the matching of this terms to the products and stuff. And, and actually shopping, it doesn't convert. Um, I mean, you, most brands actually get a positive ROI on it, but if you could double that ROI, why not? You know, and if you could also delight your users and your shoppers at the same time, why not? I'm going to show you some data about how that's a really good idea. Not just because it's a nice thing to do for the, for the shopper, but also because uh, it actually they'll reward you uh, for it. Um, so just, I want to show you, yeah, please. Um, I, he, I was able to get the results for the um, uh, poll sure. up there and they support yeah. exactly what you've seen before. So around 50% of, um, well, half the people on the webinar are using yeah. single page, single product pages. So I imagine yeah. there's a lot of users um, or their consumers out there pogo sticking and we all know how um, energy sucking that is like it right. isn't if you, now you've explained it and you've got a pogo stick in front of me i'm thinking yeah that's exactly what i do i spend most of my time going yeah, yeah this looks good oh no actually and you're spending a lot of energy whereas yeah. if they are served there it's a lot easier for me to make more of an informed decision yeah yeah it's it's not a great experience and, that, and that's why i actually wanted to show you guys um why amazon only uses these multi-product pages for for search results and why they perform better um it's because of it's a really it's a much better experience uh and so first just to eliminate all doubt of what i mean when i talk about single product versus a multi-product page this is actually a one of our customers called kogan they're you know large e-commerce um shop out here in uh, in Australia, um, APAC area. And on the left is you see their previous experience that they had, the single product page for this search result of a uh, mini display port to HDMI female adapter. And on the right is a multi-product page and there's 36 of them, 36 products that match that same search need, um, but there's more of them. And so they actually, um, they do really well with this they actually um, do more than $10 million a year in just, just from these 35,000 pages that are, have now um, aggregated the right products based on the, the search result. It's a really simple thing. It, it's kind of hard to do, you know, to match up the products to the search term, but if you can do it, it's really, really helpful um, to the user and it's, you make more money as a result. So that's good. And you can see like, here's Amazon's example that it's, it's very similar. I mean, they, go with a list view. I, I see Amazon experiment with this between like a mosaic view, which is the tile products and sometimes list view. I often, more often see the list view, but you can see that they present the same products. And um, there's a reason why they do this this way and they don't just land you on a single product page. You know, it's because they know that you have a, a need that you want to solve and they have different uh, products that match that need. But they don't know which exact specification is really going to get you to actually buy. And so, um, so that's the experience. And, but, but they're actually doing very, very well as, as a result of this one extraordinary thing that they do. They've actually overtaken it, uh, Google in the U S for product search and 60% of, sorry, 73% of all shopping journeys start um, with a, with a search engine. So that means in the U S Amazon has now become, the most dominant search engine for products and all because they really do this multi-product landing page thing really well. It says 60 here. It's actually 73. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, and, and I, and I did want to talk more about not just like the numbers of conversion. I, I do really want to get across um, the reason or the expectation that, you know, that our customers have when they are, when they're online, when they're shopping online. And I, and I really want to draw a very clear line between the experience that they want um, when they're searching versus when they're on social media. Because if you're, you know, if you have your e-commerce budget, you know, for ads, probably 
you know, 80, 90 more percent of that are these two things. So if you get those two things right, then you're, you're doing really well. But what's really interesting is that with, with search, you can see that, yeah, like I said, the conversion rate will double um, when they're presented with a multi-product page rather than a, a single product page. But on social, it's the opposite. They actually will convert high at a higher rate if they get a single product page. So I wanted to explain why, because, you know, when you're using something like iQuant to optimize for certain behaviors uh, of, the, of the user, it's really important that you get into the mindset of the user. Like earlier on, I, I cited that information about that from Forbes and I, and it was most, mostly because I want us to have empathy for the, for the shoppers and really kind of get into their mindset of what they expect and what kind of journey that they want. Not just like, um, not just look, not just saying, look, one type of landing page works. Let's run that for all of our campaigns. It's looking, you know, channel by channel, experience by experience of how, what they expect. So to kind of illustrate this, I wanted to show you the difference between browsing behavior and searching behavior. So in browsing, so it's kind of like, you know, sitting on the, on the couch watching TV. You know, you're flipping through the channels. You don't really know what you're going, going to get. This is on Instagram. Um, you see a product that is interesting to you. Um, you see a call to action that pops up on the screen. Uh, you take action. And most of the time when you take action, you're wanting to take action on that product. And, you know, that's because, you know, the, the experience that you have on social media, you know, your mood is that you're, you're playing, you're really, you're mentally kind of passive. And that is to say that you're trying to discover something new. So when you do discover something new, you're open to it. That's, that's the experience that you're willing to accept. And so you'll do that kind of impulse purchase of that particular newfound item. But searching is different. Searching is, is really an active, mentally active thing. You're, you're looking for a very particular fixed reward. You, know, you have a very particular need. Um, and what you really want to land on is a landing page that gives you multiple options that all serve your need. And you wanna pick the best one from that list of things. So when it comes to iQuant, you know, based on the type of you know, journey that they're doing, you know, whatever you want them to focus on it, you know, it might be multiple products or it might be a single product. I think later on, we're going to talk about clutter and how that can actually lead to a poor experience. But um, just suffices to say, when you're doing, um, at, when you're doing landing pages for social, go for the single product page. And when you're doing landing pages for search, use multi-product pages um, because of the type of experience that people are looking for, um, that the shoppers are looking for. And, uh, and that type of uh, experience, if you can serve that need exactly what they want, that's personalization. Personalization is the key to, I mean, that's the reason why shoppers are satisfied or unsatisfied when it comes to e-commerce. They want personalization. They want, um, and in search, that means multi-product pages um, so that they can choose from a list. So you can see, again, here's this example, and they have all these different meaning display ports to HDMI female adapters. And then they have all of the different variations that match that search. So you've got type, hertz, voltage, length, color, and, and more. That's a search experience. Now, if this was a social ad, you know, you'd want to show them a, a social influencer, you know, an influencer saying, I only buy this type of adapter. And then you'd want to click it and go and buy that one. You know, so there's a difference there. And actually this is, if you do this right, if you do personalization right and, and search, this is so key, that 44% of shoppers will actually buy repeatedly from your store um, just because you offer that personalized shopping experience. Um, and a couple of more stats here, which is, I found really interesting this is from Segment, is that 40% of shoppers said, I will actually spend more money than I had planned if I get a personalized experience when I land on that landing page. And 71% of shoppers said, you know, I'll be frustrated if you don't provide that. So this is kind of speaking to that Forbes data we heard earlier where 25% of these new shoppers on new stores are saying, hey, I'm actually really frustrated. I really need to buy something online. And I expect, you know, it's like a store. I'll walk in and say, you know, I have this problem. I need, a, you know, this type of pipe, you know, for my, for my bathroom. And then I expect to be taken by the, the you know, sales clerk over to the area that has just, that, just the pipes that solve that need. 
Um, and one thing I wanted to mention here really quickly about Amazon, it's, um, it's not a good idea to just sell your products on Amazon. It can be a good channel for you, um, even though they provide this multi-product uh, landing page experience and they do so well. Um, I saw recently that, you know, conversion rates on, from Amazon ads are like two to three times what they would be on Google um, because it's really people are there to shop and that's all they want to see. But you do lose all of the tools that you would want in e-commerce to actually have a sustainable business. It's really bad for your brand actually to just sell on Amazon because you lose out on retargeting and brand building. You can't cross sell, you can't do any list building. And of course your margin's gonna be lower because your product is featured there next to every other brand that sells that same product. So it's what you really have to do is provide this multi-page experience on your own website. And so that means doing the hard work of doing, uh, of creating the landing page experience that they, that shoppers expect. Um, and, you know, of course using Icon is gonna, is gonna do a lot of the heavy lifting uh, there because you'll know exactly what you want them to see when they land on the page. And um, we're gonna show you some examples of that. That's how some of the best brands kind of do that, best brands in search anyway. So yeah, just to, you know, belabor the point, what you really want is this cross between the multi-product experience on the one hand, um, but on your website. So doing that yourself. So, um, and before we advance here, so um, yeah, I just wanted to put up this poll. Uh, should I talk through this real quick? Yes, yeah, please. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. So yeah, for, for those of you who do put other products on the page, um, which was, I think was about half, um, it said, uh, yeah, which, uh, what's your kind of criterion for those products? So, oh, actually you're allowed here to say that we don't put other products on the pages. So um, for those of you who said no, that's gonna be your answer. Um, but you have a few different options when it comes to the other products on the page. So is it, do you put up products that match that same search term that they arrived from? Or do you put, is it people also bought to say, okay, if, if you know, you you're buying this item other people who bought this bought that or do you do that yeah frequently bought together or people as a viewed or something else so i'll let that kind of simmer while i talk about um this next oh we have some results but i'll let i'll let laura um, say when we can re yeah <laughs> yeah share. no i think that's that's the poll closed then so thank yeah. you for um answering those okay. um yep. and you, you can see the results right jeff yeah yeah anything surprising no, it's pretty, pretty good mix, you know, but when it comes to search and multi-product pages, you definitely want the products, the other products on the page to match the search term because um, what I see so often, and, you know, you saw some examples earlier of, of shops that, that, you know, don't put any products on the page, but other shops will say, you know, hey, if you're going to buy this, you should buy these other items. Well, you haven't sold me on the first item. You know, yeah. let solve my need first and then I'll consider buying the other things that go with this. But if, if I land and it's, it's not the product that's ultimately going to solve my, my need, I'm going to bounce. I'm going to pogo stick back to the search results. So uh, we're going to have some fun here um, looking at and um, tearing down some, some big brands um, landing page experience real quick. And I think Lorna has some things to say about this, but um, I guess I'll, I'll just mention like from a search experience perspective, this uh, Wayfair landing page for a wall mounted bookshelf, it really, it ticks all the boxes that you want in a, you know, in a landing page from a search experience. You've got multiple products on the page. That's one thing. Um, the other products are visible above the page fold, which is this dotted black line here. So that's the second point that they get in their favor. And the third point they get in their favor is that all of these other products are wall mounted bookshelves. So if I'm a shopper and I land on this page from that search, um, I might not like this one because it doesn't look like it would fit with my my home. But ooh, I'm gonna get I'm gonna be curious to look to keep scrolling because I see that there's other options that that might serve that same need. And then I thought it'd be fun to look at the some of the iQuant um, studies related to these landing pages for for the, the at least above the page fold and and let Lorna kind of um, you know talk through those so. Great. Oh, okay. Here we go. Um, yeah, I think um, I used to work for a um, tech company that um, specialized in personalization and I was always 
my mind was blown with the amount of data that they used to be able to um, create the algorithms to recommend those products. So we covered a couple of them, right? So frequently yeah. bought, um, there's, there's loads of them. Uh, what other people like you bought? So um, yeah. segmenting based on your demographics, age, gender, et cetera, that's one of the most um, common ones and even product bundles. But you're right, if you've not sold the user, on that one product, they're certainly not going right. to then buy the tennis balls for the racket that they haven't bought, right? So right, right. I think- And, I th and also depends on their, their need at that moment, right? Because I may be going to Amazon and recently I bought a lot of things for my nine-year-old son, but I'm looking for, you know, sticky tape to, and I don't wanna be uh, targeted with, um, you know, uh, Spider-Man, spider-man comic books you know you uh, sure? that's not what i'm interested in right now <laughs> well actually i totally do but yeah not at that moment yeah, yeah exactly Sorry, yeah. Go on. yeah and that and that's the whole point of our own personalization right it's the right product at the right time um but whilst there are amazing tools that you can use um to make those recommendations there's absolutely i say absolutely there is little point in investing in those technologies if you're not uh, if they're not visible right so that's mm. the other thing so that's where they have to work so well together around being viewable um and then being relevant and actually solving the the user um needs and wants um so what we're looking at here um will help people um understand before they go live and before they, they've got that data on uh, which products were clicked, added to the, added to the shopping cart, et cetera, how people um, perceived the page and how, what products they actually saw. So you could assume that if product A was being um, clicked and added to the shopping cart more often, then that is better than product B. But actually, a lot of the time, it's because product A has a much higher visual hierarchy. It's, it's, in the, it's right in your face. Whereas all yeah. of the other product recommendations may be hidden. Um, and that's exactly what iQuant um, is showing us here. This is um, an example of the perception map. Um, so what you can see here is it's illuminating the content which is going to be seen within the first three to five seconds. Um, and when you're thinking about the pogo stick analogy, like seconds really matter. Uh, if you're yeah. asking them to number one, jump from page to page, and then even work even harder within those pages to try and navigate uh, through different um, products, um, then there's a lot of energy. Um, and I think we all agree that as a human race, we're, we're trying to, we're getting lazier and lazier, right? So let's yes. serve it. Let's serve the right information at the right time. So the perception map, um, as you can see, is illuminating what is going to be seen. And from a UX perspective, uh, you're spot on. You can see the, the key products that they've searched for, which is the bookcase, and you can also start to see similar products. So the product recommendations are capturing um, a little bit of attention, which means that subconsciously, you know as a user, there are more products there. And um, if we scroll on yeah. to the next page, uh, this is the um, attention map. So this is more of a granular look into how that attention is spread um, and distributed across the page. Um, so based on your uh, design objectives or goals, you, you can uh, use this data to make iterations to the same uh, layout, same page, to ensure that you're um, distributing attention and capturing attention in, in the right way. Um, and then if we look at the next slide, um, you can see um, this is a hot spots report. Um, so this is showing the top 10 uh, focal points um, and a sequential look as to where people are looking on that page. So you can then make a decision as a designer, um, as a digital uh, or e-commerce manager, that actually this isn't relevant. Uh, so I can then play around with the visual hierarchy to ensure that the most relevant content, whether that is the core product or whether that is similar bookcases or whether that is add to cart, is actually going to be seen. Uh, because the last thing we want to do is make it even harder for people to convert, right? Um, yeah. So I personally, I love Wayfair. Um, I think I, I'm definitely adding to some of those stats. I spend far too much time <laughs> looking. I love the, the, v, the virtual reality adding to your car and you can actually yeah. see it in your own living room. 
I'm sat on a chair right now from Wayfair. So I think they, they invest a lot of money in testing, optimizing, and building out technology to enable, to mirror or replicate the actual in-store experience, right? So yeah. it makes you feel like and you're I, actually in store. Yeah, and I find, I, I find one of the things that I, that I like about iQuant is that, you know, for websites that don't, for e-commerce sites that don't get millions of visitors every day and can't run, you know, 10 A-B tests per day mm -hmm. with 95%, you know, confidence interval who don't really have that kind of, um, you know, budget, they could actually, you know, simulate a test, simulate sort of eye tracking tests to see, you know, whether things are visible so that at least their intention, uh, you know, of I want people to see that there's other products that match their search is served, you know, and, and what I found interesting about this one was um, if, if I was, you know, the marketing director for Wayfair, I would say, yeah, actually, if this turned up, you know, where the second product from the left actually was the most was the more visible of the of the others um, on multiple times, I would say, let's put the, the highest matching one in the second spot, not in the left, not in the furthest left spot, I put it here. And, you know, and that's the kind of thing, you know, those little differences are what, you know, increases conversion rates over time and really, you know, drives a business and, mm -hmm. and creates that personalization, that feeling. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. I thought maybe we'll go on to the next example. Um, so I want to be mindful of time, but it, I don't know if you, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, cool. I was getting too distracted. <laughs> All right, sure. Sure. <laughs> the next one here is uh, Nordstrom. I wanted to use an apparel example. So again, they tick all the boxes. They've got multiple matching double breasted pantsuits here, all lovely. Um, actually, one of them, two of them appear to be short suit uh, pants, but whatever. Nobody's perfect. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and they're all uh, above the page fold and they all match, um, but they're on the right hand side. So I was curious to see how visible they'd be um, on that landing page and here are the results. So I'll turn it over yeah. back over to you, Lorna. Yeah. I think I was really surprised to see this as a, as a layout. Yeah. Um, and I guess um, being able to compare um, different e-commerce, um, different categories. So you've got fashion, you've got uh, electronics, et cetera. You can actually take uh, inspiration as to what's working well on those pages and not just necessarily stick to, oh, e-commerce, we've always done it this way, for example. Yeah. But I was really surprised to see, well, Iquant, the perception map actually illustrates this, right? I completely missed the, yeah. the recommendations. They're, they're so small, yeah. the thumbnails are tiny. I'm amazed that yeah. you were able to see that they're, they're shorts rather than trousers. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so even from a, from a layout perspective, if you think about um, the Wayfair example that we saw, naturally your eye is looking down the page. That's, we, we know that that is how you navigate through um, e-commerce sites, any um, website. So to have the re um, recommendations on the far right in such small thumbnails, it's completely mm -hmm. missed. Um, yeah. So whether or not that's intentional, um, because arguably the call to action is, is uh, capturing a lot of attention. So from a decision-making process, uh, this brand is making it very, very easy. This is your product, um, this yellow jumpsuit or suit um, and this is how you add it to your car so uh, there's not right. a huge cognitive load there it's a very simple yeah. journey but what is being missed um, and especially if you go onto the attention map you can see that there is very little attention um, being drawn to those product recommendations and that may be yeah. because of the nature of buying uh, suits uh, I don't know how often I've bought multiple suits um, certainly not trouser suits but um, it is just really interesting to be able to test before you go live and before you waste traffic and um, search uh, budget to test before you go live how the different layouts impact attention. Yeah. Well, and also as a, as a marketing director, you know, I, I look at this and I'd say, I mean, like long tail UX, pretty much all we do is, is make these landing pages. I mean, we make them at scale and we match the products. And we pat ourselves on the back for, for matching up the exact right products to the exact search. Um, but, but if a customer asked us to, you know, provide this search experience, you know, I might actually say we'd rather not, you know, because they're going to look at their analytics afterwards and say, you know, we didn't actually get any conversion uplift, you know, from these pages. So this multi-product uh, approach that you're talking about doesn't work. But then we could go back to the iQuant 
study and go before any of this started and go, you know what, we actually don't recommend this um, because these are not going to get any better results um, because there's no other products visible on this page. If people don't like yellow, they're going to say, great, congratulations, you gave me a pantsuit, uh, trouser suit, I guess in the UK, but I'm not buying because I don't, I don't like yellow. I'm looking for a different color. I'm looking for a different style, um, different number of buttons, whatever. So, you know, I, I found that really interesting. It's basically, this is a single product landing page, even though technically it ticks all the boxes, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's got to be yeah. seen to be acted on, right? You can only yeah. influence user or consumer behavior if they see, um, if they see the messaging or the content. Right, right. And it costs a lot of money to, to just pay the front end team to, to build this and design this in the first place. Like, that's all wasted if you just don't do that, you know, don't do the eye tracking study first, you know. So. Beforehand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then the hotspots. Anything to add here? Or it's similar, uh, similar no, finding? It, it's similar finding, right? Um, yeah. it's, it's a really good um, way of highlighting um, where pe what's most visible, what's most likely to be retained. So the longer yeah. you look at something, the more likely you are to be able to recall that information um, or yeah. at least navigate to it and know where it is. Um, so this is, um, this, if you contrast this to the Wayfair hotspots, they were very, mm -hmm. very closely um, linked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas this page, uh, this design is actually distributing those focal points across the, all of the, the real estate. So I think from a, a e-commerce perspective, um, you've got attention on the brand, which may be very important for this brand um, from a brand awareness perspective. Um, you've got the products quite rightly and naturally um, grabbing that attention. And then you've got the call to action um, around that. But as you've said, if your objective is to, uh, or your goal is to serve um, other um, items of clothing that may be more suitable and maybe more personalized, then they're missing a trick because yeah. you're making yeah. it very this, this, difficult to actually discover those things. This would be a great landing page for social, for social media, for people browsing social media. This would be great. You know, put up a little short video ad of a woman walking around looking lovely in this, in this garment. They tap on it because they love this garment and then they want to buy that, you know, mm -hmm. um, of course they're going to convert. And then this is, you know, this, uh, you know, the sort of layout here from a CRO perspective is very, you know, Paul Krug, I think it was, who wrote that don't make me think, you know, I don't want to have to think about where to, you know, to add this to the cart because I want to be able to make the, you know, I want to be able to execute on my plan right away. But that's the difference is that in, when it comes to search, People do want to think. They are thinking. Actually, they're in. They're they're in that mode where they're they're doing research and they're looking for the best one. So it's 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 much better to um, to give them some focus on some other um, items to consider, so that at least they'll be curious enough to keep browsing. In this case, they wouldn't. So it, it doesn't work. Um, but that takes us to our last example here, which I think is has got some very interesting. Um, results but uh but this is best buy obviously you know billion dollar budgets you know to do all of the user testing and, and user experience that they want and this is the layout that they chose so they're again ticking all three boxes they have the uh you know related they have the matching similar products to the to to the search um they actually have located them above the featured product and they have it under this uh people ultimately bought um, because they know when someone lands on this page for this product more often, they're going to buy this one. So, um, so I found this really interesting because it's a very aggressive way to do um, related products. And, uh, and, and then they also have this, uh, you know, the nav bar on the right or the, you know, widget on the right that show what people also viewed. So um, I'll let Lorna, I'll let you talk about this from a, like a, an experience perspective and then also from a, like a clutter perspective you were mentioning earlier. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. thank you. This page, I think the three that we've, um, discussed so far, so Wayfair, um, I forget the other apparel brand, uh, um, Nordstrom, Nordstrom and, um, yeah. Best Buy. 
Uh, they have got very, very different um, designs um, and conversion pages and product pages. This actually has, is it 10 different products all competing yes. through your attention? Yes. Um, which, I mean, that's a lot of information for the brain uh, to compute. Um, and what, we, what you're asking for here with the imagery, the content, um, you've got um, quite big contrast in the white background with the black um, uh, actual products and then the blue navigation. Like there's, there's quite a lot going on here. Uh, but yet, and I think this is typical Best Buy, they've got the price in the center of the page capturing um, a lot of attention. So um, as you said, they spend a lot of money in, uh, on testing and optimizing um, conversion pages. Um, so I don't think by any means that this is an accident, but it is a very unusual um, style given yeah. um, the amount of information that is competing for your attention. Yeah. And, and I'd say that, I mean, like if, uh, my first thing that I would say looking at this is just take out those products on the right hand side altogether. I mean, they're not drawing any focus anyway. Um, and so they're not going to get clicked on. Um, and they're just taking up real estate where you could probably do something a little bit nicer for the brain. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. That'd yeah. be my first thought. We, we know from... Um lots and lots of studies and it, it's a it's an area of uh, neuroscience um, and cognitive science that has been studied and researched um, a lot if there is a lot of things competing for your attention it causes a huge amount of cognitive load that for people that are trying to make a decision so purchase is overwhelming and there's no clear next step so if you don't know um, what the next step is, you naturally go back to the step that you've right. just taken. So we see uh, from the studies that uh, Iquant's um, conducted, there's actually, um, I think it was, I can't remember the specific number, so I won't quote it, but it's a large scale, scud um, large scale study um, of um, clarity score um, and also bounce rate. And there is that correlation between the, um, the more cluttered a design, the higher the likelihood of that user bouncing straight up your page. And that's mm. not good for any mm. conversion rate, right? Yeah, and I, I think the thing that really irritates me about this page, now that you've drawn it to my attention, is how um, there's so many different, um, like the way that the products are structured, they're, they're organized in so many different ways and in, across so many different angles. You know, you've got the main feature product at the bottom, which got, has its own kind of section, but then the three at the top, and then my brain wants that bar to go all the way across the, to the end. And then, but it gets interrupted and then you've got one going down. And it's like, where am I supposed to look, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's much better, yeah. You know, we don't actually, yeah, our landing pages look quite different from this, and I'll show you in a, in a moment how we do it, but, um, but I, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, we've yeah, only did you want got, to take a look at the, sorry. Uh, we've got 15 minutes left. Um, we have okay. just had a, a question um, pop in, so I think um, it would sure. be good to discuss that. So Philip sure. has asked, um, mobile search is highly used, um, and it's increasing, right? I think it's around the 42%. I don't know, again, I shouldn't quote unless I, I have the numbers in front of me. Um, mm. there, um, there you can only often only show one product. So do you have any recommendations or suggestions about how you overcome that? Yeah, as, as long as, so you should still have, and we, we still put multiple products, but really normally what you see is just the next product peaking just above the, the page fold is what we'll show. Um, you know, it's, you, you don't have the real estate to show multiple products often unless you have like a list view or something like that, um, which, which works pretty well. I mean, eBay uses it, uh, that view. Gumtree over here, they use that same view. Um, but as long as you, as long as they know that, that there's something and if they keep scrolling, there's something uh, else, um, you can keep them there that much longer. But um, I mean, when it comes to mobile, I think we're, we're used to scrolling anyway, but if there's just some indication that there's more products below that first one, any indication that's very clear, um, you're going to, your conversion rate will increase. Um, and, and I always, you know, kind of think back to the, you know, the, the, the Pinterest model and why Pinterest is so addictive. It's because of, you know, uh, there's a book called uh, Hooked by Mir Eyal that talks about this. And it's the kind of the dopamine response of, if I keep on scrolling, maybe I'm gonna, you know, discover that, you know, the thing that really matches, you know, my exact need right now. Um, as long as they know that, that, that 
scrolling will lead them to other products that might serve that same need, um, your, your conversion rate's gonna increase. So, yeah. I was on mute. Um, so you'd recommend still um, having multiple products, but not in the typical um, display you can see here, just a teaser. Right. So you entice the, the user or consumer down to, to browse more. Yeah, any indication, okay. you know, even if it just says like one of 10 products at the top of the screen, at the top of the screen, yeah. um, you know, and, and really important to have in the, on the landing page, um, the, the actual, you know, the actual keyword, whenever possible, the search term that they search for. Um, so that's how our landing page, the multi-product pages always um, look. There's some limitations in some channels, but whenever possible, you know, putting the number of products uh, and then the actual search term, uh, repeating that for them so that they know that that's going to, these are products that's, that serve that nerd, that, that need. Um, that's the key. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Did you want to move um, on to the, yeah, or yeah, I don't know if you have other questions there? Yeah, let's okay. scoot on through. Sure. And any other fun, uh, thoughts here from like the attention map or? Um, yeah, well, it is uh, the illustrates so the visualization of data here. You can see the red yeah. is hot, right? And it's bang mm. on that price point. Um, right. And I do think it is um, from a cognitive perspective, it is quite unusual, unusual to have the price. Yeah. Um, right in the center even of the page um and not have it anywhere near the actual product the product yeah, yeah. exactly Fifty nine um, ninety nine for what yeah, yeah. all of it yeah. all of the 10 products that i can see um yeah. so using uh, the attention uh, map specifically here you can actually um before you go live play around with the distribution of that um attention uh, and i would think from a user perspective that you could um, improve it by having that price point a little bit closer to the main product image. So that it's yeah. very, very clear what, what you're purchasing there. Yeah. And there we go again, you can see that it's not as um, distributed the attention from the far left to the far right of the page, um, mm. whereas the apparel brand was. Um, but even the call to action is being completely missed. That, that, isn't, that price point there is not a call to action. Um, and if you're yeah. spending or investing that amount of time looking at something, you would naturally put the call to action a little bit closer so that you're not then asking them to move across the page again, back to um, where that call to action, oh, it's at, at the bottom actually. Uh, so I yeah. didn't even, I, I've looked at this a couple of times and I didn't even naturally know where that call to action was. Um, yeah. But again, it comes down to um, where this actually fits in the um, user journey. So have they just landed here from a search um, query? Have they come here from an email campaign? In which case they're already pretty educated and, and know what they expect. So that's the other thing. I think the yeah. uh, analyses that we've seen so far from iQuant um, are um, on new visitors, right? Um, there are two modes within iQuant because um, and there should be within any um, technology that you're using. Uh, you, there is absolutely no point in applying um, insights and findings from technology unless that technology uh, represents or takes into consideration the mindset of that user. So for example, um, the new visitor algorithm means that um, there are certain things, it's, it's more aligned to the um, browsing um, example that you gave you're more susceptible right. to um information where whereas a returning user if they've come from an email um searched term etc they know what they're looking for that's a goal orientated um experience therefore things that actually compete for their attention that aren't in line with their goal are actually going to be quite annoying and um, so yeah. i would strongly recommend using um technology in a way that mirrors human behavior um, and that yeah. way before you go live you are going to have a much higher likelihood of actually creating a, a digital experience that meets meets their expectation yeah well yeah and if you're spending you know as it is with like best buy they i think it's like 50 million dollars a month on on you know shopping ads and paid mm -hmm. ads seems like you might um be a little bit more flexible about things like for example you know showing these these menu items which get so much focus 
um, I mean, no, no one really at that moment landing from a search is, is going to want to be want to going to want to go browse deals and services. You know, they really solve my need right now. And then, you know, I'll become your loyal customer and keep buying, which is what the data said earlier. And, yeah. uh, you know, so Matt, yeah, exactly. As you said, matching the design to the intent of the user at that time on that exact journey. Um, so I think that's you're going to see that more in the future, um, which is what we experiment a lot with with landing page um, construction is is thinking about the journey. Of course, we only do search, so it makes it easier for us to focus down on that. But thinking about the journey and eliminating the things that you know that that don't actually uh, help the the customer. You know, if if I'm if I walk into a store, you know, looking for leashes for my my dachshund. And, you know, they say, well, look, while you're here, you know, would you like to consider goldfish? You know, I mean, we do have these nice goldfish. No, that's actually going to annoy me and I'm not going to. And yet this is what websites do all the time. We're yeah. expecting, you know, we have ads and, you know, and, and pop-ups and, and menu items that are completely unnecessary uh, for that journey. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's the big takeaway here. Is, you know, if you don't want to be left behind in this as e-commerce surges, um, start being more empathetic to the user and the type of experience that they want from that type of the journey that, that they're on. So, um, so yeah, I thought I'd, I'd just finish up with a few examples of um, some digital transformation that um, some of our customers have done um, by just doing this. So I thought we'd go through that and then if there's any follow-up questions. Um, yeah. All good? Yeah, yeah, great. I'd yeah? love to okay. see the, um, sure. the results. Um, yeah, of great. actually making these yeah. recommendations. Sure. Yeah. And I, you know, want to talk about um, a couple of clients here, like there's a door beauty They're in, um, they're in beauty. Um, and uh, this is on the left, their previous user experience. When someone searched, they would land them on this single page with different colors. Um, the example here was invisible lip liner, but um, in this case, you're only presented with one brand and that's Mac, you know, so, um, the way that that women, you know, shop for beauty products, as far as I've been told, um, is that you know, there will be brand loyalties at some times. And of course, there's going to be lots of different elements of that lip liner that, you know, that um, you may you may be looking for. Like um, they found, for example, with um, when we created landing pages for them for search terms that they never thought about, but um, they were, you know, they were spending millions of dollars on these search terms like things like cruelty-free makeups and, um, you know, vegan makeups and, um, you know, uh, SPF 45 or, you know, um, different, different even payment platforms sometimes. There's a payment platform called Afterpay here, which they hadn't really considered. And so we started thinking, getting really into the mindset of the customer and creating these multi-product pages according to their actual, uh, that, the customer's intention of that search. So sometimes they would search, for example, for, you know, the best lip liner, best invisible, invisible lip liner, in which case um, we drew in this, this third party, um, these, these reviews and then ranked the products by reviews. Or if they were looking for cheapest, then we rank it by price or, you know, there are lots of other different, you know, like, like I said, cruelty free and all of that uh, data is actually in your feed. It's in your product feed. It's just most companies aren't really good at presenting pages full of the products that match those things. So, um, so yeah, the result of this, you know, I mean, their conversion rate almost doubled. So it's very cl close to the um, results of the the monetate study that that we saw earlier. And in terms of re you know return on ad spend, the reason that this went higher than 100%, even though the the conversion rate only doubled, um, is because people were buying more, and they were buying more. I think this is my hypothesis anyway. Uh, based on the study that I saw uh, that we saw earlier that um, they'll spend more money if you personalize the search journey for them and if you really understand them and what they're looking for. I mean, me, like, you know, that's, that, that actually is pretty important to me. I um, want to show you guys a couple more examples, some, you know, different sort of diverse industries. There's this really cool brand called Vino Mofo that <laughs> does, um, they do on, online alcohol sales. Uh, sales have been booming since the, since the lockdown, but I we uh, <laughs> sort of, yeah, we, I don't know if that's the same in the UK, but yeah, they've been doing really well. But, uh, but here's an example for like a sweet champagne wine on the left. There was, you know, one product, this was their old experience and they would just take whatever was their top seller. Um, and just by putting three different types of sweet wine champagnes on the page, and we did this for about 
3,000 pages, you know, the return on ad spend went up. Um, the number of repeat buyers actually increased, and this for them was really important. And again, that's that's what they're looking for is that like loyalty. And you know, if you put the the customer's needs first, and again, that's something that Kogan does really well as well. Um, you know, that that's when you know that's when you get this brand loyalty. Um, it's not just when you make your brand the most you know visible thing on the landing page. You have to actually um, do something nice for them, and you know, see uh, sort of their uh, the type of experience that they want. And then this last one, this is Mobile City, um, a mobile phone seller, really simple thing here. Um, again, all of these kind of companies had the same problem, which was that they're competing against other brands for the same products. And so, you know, we as savvy shoppers, typically we look for just wherever has the lowest price, but that's not always possible to, you know, always beat your competitors on price. Otherwise, you'd just go on Amazon because, again, the search experience is already there, and if you can beat them on margin, then you know you'll you'll probably just um, you'll you'll dominate on Amazon. But if you want to sell on your own website and actually build your own brand, you'll do something like these companies did, which is provide that same experience on your own website. And again, this is you know the Samsung Galaxy S10 is something that you know that you've got millions of websites that sell the same product. So how can you differentiate yourself? Is by creating this kind of, you know, multi-product landing page experience and really like getting into the, like the user experience and providing, you know, that providing that kind of journey for them. So again, the, you know, conversion rate went up, the return on ad spend went up and the average order value went up. So again, it just kind of shows the value of, you know, this is something you can actually build a brand on is by delighting customers by knowing what they want and really giving it to them. Um, so yeah, I have some takeaways here. I don't know if you want me to go straight through uh, them or uh, if you want to pause for anything else, Lauren, before we move yeah, on. Yeah, let's, let's get straight yeah. into the takeaways. Sure, We've only sure. got a couple of minutes left, so let's um, sure. give people the good stuff. All right, good. Well, this is what we talked about today. And again, you know, e-commerce has grown um, much faster than we expected due to the, you know, the situation we're in, 77%, which kind of put us in the future. Uh, you know, we're customers expect it to be 2025 and yet we're still here stuck in 2020 with our old technology so customer expectations are high and you know they're easily disappointed so um you know how can you do like these brands are, are doing these you know the wayfarers and the you know adore beauties and kogans you, you can win these lifelong customers with personalized shopper experience so if you can give them an experience that delights them and where they don't have to pogo stick, they don't have to be distracted by, you know, pricing clutter and things that, you know, that, that Lorna was talking about, you'll win those customers on just on experience alone. And one thing you can do is really create this multi-product landing page experience, put the right matching products on that page, you know, and achieve that experience. And of course, so you can save, you know, your budget and you don't have to take too much time, uh, you know, waste too much time looking for the type of user experience, just mock it up um, and run it through, run it through iQuant to accelerate your performance, you know, rather than waiting for the AB test results to come back and you go, wow, we put all these new products on the page, but the conversion rate didn't go up. I guess Jeff was wrong. Nope. They just weren't visible. Run it through iQuant first and then you Jeff's know, never then, wrong. then we'll talk. I'm never wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Anyway, so that's all I got for, to for tonight. Um, but yeah, I'll turn it back over to you. That is perfect timing. We've got yeah. 60 seconds left. Um, so we've crammed right. as much in as possible. So thank you so much. That was so, so useful. Um, really um, beneficial to uh, have a look at different brands from different uh, industries and compare and contrast to see what's working, what's not working. And really incredible results that you've seen there with your um, your own customers as well. So if anybody has any questions around um, how to improve conversion rate for e-commerce, Jeff, how do they get in contact with you? Um, it's just jeff at longtailux.com is my, my email. Um, Perfect. You can go to our website and, and book in time and we'll talk to you about, you know, I think most of the time we spend in the beginning is just, okay, what do you propose to actually do with my website? And how are you going to do this? Um, and so we talk a lot of shop, a lot of UX. Um, and so, yeah, let's, uh, you know, we really want to hear what, what, um, what people are struggling with because we have some of our customers where their sales have gone up by like three or 400% lately. And they, you know, they're like, wow, this is, this is great. And it's, it's all just because, 
you know, they're kind of doing things in a, in a, in a more empathetic way for their customers. So, so do that, whether you, you know, work with us in the future or not, like, please empathize with the customer and like everything will, they'll reward you. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Um, so reach out um, to Jeff and you can also reach out to me. It's Lorna at iquant.com if you've got any questions or if you'd like to be a uh, feature in the next um, webinar. Uh, next week's webinar is actually um, by a really great guy called Philip who specializes in email optimization. So we're going to be looking at how eye tracking data can be used to capture attention via um, emails as well. So um, again, okay. thank you very much. Um, thank you, Lorna. It's been a, a pleasure. Thank you so much um, and have All a right. great evening. Thanks everybody for coming today. Bye. Bye-bye.